Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. So most of us are aware that the Liberal Party has not much recurring goodwill with their constituents. But if you take Jagmeet Singh out of the equation, they really don't have any support at all from the existing seats that they have in their minority government. And were it not for Jagmeet Singh and his desire to further his own ends at the expense of the Canadian voting population and the population at large, we would probably be talking about a new government. However, the Liberals have not quit on themselves and they're trying desperately to buy as many votes as they can with projects that they're throwing billions of dollars into Toronto, like for food, for housing, for trains, all projects that are not working, but they throw the money at it so that they convince you, the voter, that if you don't vote for them, it's all just going to magically disappear. It's just going to poof into the air. Like all of a sudden the conservatives are not going to need a housing plan. And all of a sudden the conservatives are not going to need proper trains and things of that nature. And they are do the same in uh, Western British Columbia, again, with throwing money at everybody who will ever listen. And of course the next spot that they have to worry about is, is Nova Scotia. And we are aware that they bought, tried to buy as many votes as they could when they gave them a tax credit on the heating fuel. Well, it turns out that they haven't stopped there. They're throwing hundreds of millions of dollars into more of these electricity plans. And some of the regions that they're throwing all this money in are barely 5,000 people. But every region that they're throwing money at is represented by a liberal MP. Before we get into it, I would encourage you all to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this channel with all of your socials. I have memberships if, and I have an open GoFundMe if you wish to support the channel that way. However, any support that you give me, I appreciate. Like I was saying, the liberals are running around the country trying to buy all the votes they can. They're taking tax dollars away from the next generation of voters. And instead of giving them homes, they're giving them empty promises. They want you to believe that you are somehow leading the way. And if you, if Trudeau and the Liberal Party were running out front, waving a flag, saying, look, we're going to be good to the environment, good to the environment, stopped and turned around, they would see there isn't a single solitary country behind them. They have other, most of the other countries in this world have pulled out, uh, uh, these packs have pulled out indefinitely, or they have stalled it to the fifties, or they have done all of these things, made promises and that they just wanted the local population to vote for them. And now they realize that economically it can't happen and they're desperately trying to hold on to their jobs. So they are punting it down the road to the very next administration. And the liberal party doesn't, it seems to be the only one who doesn't realize that. And is that because they are desperately clinging onto power or is that because they realize that the in, um, natural mineral wealth of Canada is so tremendous. I'm not 100% sure. I can't speak for them. What I can say with certainty is that they are throwing hundreds of millions of dollars at regions that they have a lot of seats in, that they feel those seats are in jeopardy, and reason, regions where there is no liberal seats, they're not giving any infrastructure money to, they're not giving any new projects to, they're not doing any, any of that. So all that Jonathan Wilkinson MP, the... Um, energy and minerals minister talk and, and i'll show you my point funding announced earlier this month by minister fraser for the town of antigonish which has ambitions to be canada's first net zero community a, a, a grant of 10 million dollars to help modernize the local grid 10 million dollars because these guys have a plan to be canada's first zero emissions community ten million dollars for a population of twenty thousand however mp frazier his seat is in Antigonish. this is his riding so they vaguely say well we're trying to get net zero here's ten million dollars into a region of twenty thousand people i've been in this region I can tell you right now, it's a quiet little town, a lot of back road, dirt roads, surrounded by trees. Good people, great people, good food, a lot of fun. 20,000 people are getting $10 million. Just seems a little suspicious to me that it happens to be exactly in the town that Sean Frazier is the MP of. But you can let me know what, you're, what you think down in the comments. Does it sound suspicious or am I just overreacting? 
$3 million to support the installation of 650 electric vehicle chargers in Wolfville and Halifax, which was recently announced by MP Cody Bloy. $3 million to put in 600 chargers in Halifax and Wolfville. Wolfville's got a population of 5,000. It's on the Bay of Fundy where they already have a Bay of Fundy project that the Liberals killed. It's completely green, has no emissions, but the Liberals destroyed it. I don't think that it's beyond the imagination to see how Cody Bloy is getting a $3 million injection into his region at a time when his polling numbers are in the toilet. It seems a little bit suspect to me that they would be trying to put in an electric charger in Wolfville in a population of 5,000 people. However, he can run around and say, if you don't vote for me, that extra million dollars is not going to come into your pocket. Oh, and my cousin, he installed that charger. And they did it, you know, one charger for $100,000 or whatever, you know. Support for the Weavers Mountain Wind Project through a $25 million investment in its Antigonish project. $125 million investment by Export Development Canada in Everwind to support the development of a hydrogen and ammonia export facility in Port Hawkesbury. An ammonia and hydrogen export facility in Port Hawkesbury when you got Halifax. Right, don't forget, you, this is the third deepest natural ice-free harbor in the world. And you're putting it in Port Hawkesbury, which is on the bottom end of Cape Breton. And it has a booming population of 2,000 people, 2,900 people, 3,000 people. So you want to put a refinery, you want to put an, uh, a hydrogen plant there. And you're going to do it with a population that is already, that is just 3,000 people? No, you're going to take 100,000 people out of the that you imported into Quebec and imported into Toronto, and you're going to dump them in this small little sleepy village, this little tiny tourist town, and you're going to tear up the ground, and you're going to build all this hydrogen piping, and you're going to lay it in the water, and you're going to say it's all for the environment. But this fella here, Kellaway, well, he's the MP, if you don't vote for me, then those jobs are never going to come again. And of course, we all know that the one thing that the conservative versus liberal mindset, the conservatives put less regulations and put more money. So if it's a good project, if it's a viable project, then like, I, I think that this is a good one. I don't think that some of the projects that Wilkinson is announcing are any good at all. Let's just listen to, I just wanted to point out. So he's made three announcements, hundreds of millions of dollars. All three have seats in the House of Commons under the Liberal banner. You tell me what you think. Does that sound suspicious or do you think that that's just normal? Don't worry, though. He hasn't stopped there. He's got to now buy off some of the um, voting groups that are in the neighborhood, the First Nations, for example. And I'll let you hear what he has to say to all of these particular special interest groups. The provision of $700,000 to the Federation of Mainland Mi'kmaq to support Mi'kmaq communities incorporating traditional knowledge, data, and values to create holistic strategic forest management plans. $300,000 to Acadia University to support force and the Tidal Task Force Force's risk assessment and monitoring working groups. The federal government will be committing an additional approximately $200 million for a number of electricity projects here in Nova Scotia. Three are focused on increasing electricity generation. $25 million for the Benjamin Mills Wind Project southwest of the town of Windsor, which will $25 million for the Wedgwood Wind Farm Project, which will install an 80 megawatt onshore wind farm in the district of Argyle. And beyond generation, to store uh, clean, affordable uh, energy, we are providing $120 million for advanced battery storage projects, which support the grid capacity required to enable the closure of Nova Scotia's remaining coal facilities. Through this funding, the federal government is helping to advance three 50 megawatt battery storage sites in Bridgewater, Spider Lake, and White Lake. These battery projects have also received nearly $130 million in additional federal funding through the Canada Infrastructure Bank. Well, you heard him, $700,000 to the local First Nations so that they can incorporate traditional with their new science and look after the trees. Uh, they're going to give 300000 to the local university to look after the title. And they're going to put another $25 million in a little town of Windsor, which is, again, back in Cody Bloy's writing. It's literally 20 minutes, 26 minutes, according to Google, from his writing in Wolfville to this town. Now, 
it's a city of 5,000 and they're going to put in a turbine and a battery there for millions of dollars. You heard him say there's another 125 million that came in from the Canada Infrastructure Bank, which is all just tax dollars, tax dollars, tax dollars. It's not like these guys have the money. This isn't like they're being uh, altruistic. They don't have the money. They're expecting you to pay for it. Ridiculous, the idea that he has for this hydrogen. You can't even make this up. One, which is the focus of the work here, is on using renewables, uh, wind, in order to generate hydrogen through uh, electrolysis. And so the auctions essentially will be a bid into by uh, users, industrial users, of a price and a volume that they actually want to pay. Um, and, uh, and we will look then at what is the price that can be offered by producers, including the, the, the folks that are with us today. Um, and we will use the $600 million to fill the gaps um, and, and to ensure that you can actually contract for, for, for the hydrogen. What he said there was, we're going to start this hydrogen wind farm with electrolysis, which is a process by which they separate the oxygen from the hydrogen. They use the hydrogen to power whatever it is, the engine that you're looking to utilize. And they do it through a process called electrolysis, which is just a barrier. It's about positive and negative. The electrons go with the, with the positive and then the negative gets pushed away. So it goes up a different thing and then it reforms over here. And of course, when hydrogen and water come together, excuse me, when hydrogen and oxygen come together, they form water. So there is no emissions except for water. However, in the meantime, the hydrogen is powered up and all of this stuff which by itself doesn't sound like a problem, right? I mean, it's the salt water, it's the Atlantic Ocean, it's got everything it needs. I mean, we all know that the wind power often needs to be run by diesel, but they're leaving that out of their announcement. What I found interesting was they asked him a question about, you, you would think these guys would be better at asking themselves. I mean, they, they give the questions to the press, right? So you would think that they would know how to, to frame these questions better. They asked him about the auction system, which is going to be, because right now this hydrogen manufacturing is expensive. It's like $4 when we need it somewhere down to around 80 cents. And they did this whole spiel about how well we're going to, it's going to be expensive now, but sooner or later it's going to be cheap because we'll be up to up, you know, we'll have figured out a way. And maybe it will be cheap if it's going in mass production, but you can't say that about something that's being given in the hands of two groups, right? We got the industrial users, which is the people that are buying it and selling it to me and you, and then we got the people that are manufacturing it. So what they're saying is that there's gonna be $600 million of subsidies for you. So if you're on, if your house is put on this grid of electrical hydrogen power and you find that your rates have shot up, well, they're going to, they got 600 million that they're going to use for subsidies to ensure that you can still pay the same amount until that money runs out. And then they'll just say, well, that's what your electricity rates cost. And if you can't afford it, we're going to cut you off. And then you're right back into the poverty that we see in most of the world. So though I applaud the idea of attempting to get hydrogen because I think that there's a real future in hydrogen, I don't think that we should be putting the houses in the region on the grid until that grid has come to the point where it is affordable. I think that we can see that there's a, there's a market for exporting the hydrogen. Certainly there's lots of um, different projects that are happening right now. And electrolysis is much cleaner than using the processes that you're using in the, in the oil fields to get the same result. But to say that the, the houses in that area are going to be getting a $600 million boost or the businesses in that area are going to be getting a $600 million boost until that money runs out and then they're going to be paying whatever it is that they pay does not seem like it's good for the 99% the of us. And I think that the environment minister and Wilkinson, the natural resources minister, should come to understanding that the people don't need to be paying for these projects twice so it's their tax dollars and they're paying it at home now too so they're making that guy rich while they that guy takes all the money that they have to spend on anything else and give it only to the power company and then they're giving 43 percent of their check to taxes so that those guys could take that money and give it to the people running the power company where does the 99 percent benefit and when are these liberals going to understand that the benefit for the people is why they were put in place. Nobody said, hey, 
John Wilkinson, go save the world. They said, hey, make our life a better thing. Go look after us. It seems to me that they've lost sight of that. That's just my opinion. You can leave me your opinion down in the comments. I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.